Good morning, and welcome to our video devotion for Tuesday, January the 19th, 2021. I'm glad you joined me for this morning's Bible study because it, it's one of my favorite, it, this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture in the entire Bible. It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 1. So if you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, we're going to begin with verses 3 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. I thank God, whom I serve as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as day, night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith. Timothy said that, Paul said that Timothy's faith was sincere. Now the Greek word that he uses here literally means honest, possessing integrity, without pretense. Here's the thing, you could accuse Timothy of many things. Sometimes he could be tender-hearted. He got a little discouraged from time to time. He, he needed to be propped up with, with words of support and encouragement. But the one thing that you could not question was the nature of Timothy's faith in Christ. He not only loved the Lord with all his heart, with all his mind, and with all his strength, he lived a life that was pleasing to God and impressed others. So let me ask you, if Paul were evaluating your life, would he credit you with sincere faith? Do you live a life that's pleasing to God? Do you live a life that impresses others? Sincere faith is a goal every Christian should strive for. Listen to what the Bible says in, sec in Philippians 2, verses 12 through 13. Therefore, my dear brothers, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose." You know, a lot of people misunderstand what the Bible is saying here. The Bible isn't saying that you have to earn your salvation through the things that you say and do. You are, you are, remember, you're saved by grace, through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that never changes. But the Bible is saying that your goal should be to start at the point of your salvation, wherever that was, and work to become more like Jesus every day. You know, when, whenever someone asks me, are you saved, I, I want to say, well, I'm in the process. I mean, there was a time when I was saved. Right now I am being saved, and someday I will be saved. Then I would say, my salvation has been set, sealed in Jesus, but it will not be complete until I get to heaven. And then I explain, the time between here, which is the salvation, the point of salvation, and here, Heaven, that time in between is my life. During my lifetime on earth, my goal is to become more like, well, Timothy, who was trying to become more like Jesus. I want to be a person of sincere faith. All right, let's pick it up in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded, now lives in you also. You know, Paul recognized that Timothy had been blessed with a grandmother and a mother who were committed, dedicated Christians. Women who had taught Timothy what it meant to be saved and how to serve Jesus Christ. Now, not every Christian can say that. Not, not every Christian. Some of the finest Christians I've ever met uh, have, have had parents who were indifferent at best or hostile at worst to the Bible and the message of God's love. That these people turned out the way that they did is really a testimony to the power of God's grace. But many Christians are more like, well, me, more like Timothy. We were blessed with, by God with parents who not only taught us about the love of Jesus Christ from birth, they didn't just send us to church, they were active ministering members of the church themselves. They were able to sit down with me at us at an appropriate time and explain the plan of salvation. Now, if you had parents or, or grandparents like that, take some time to get down on your knees today and thank your heavenly daddy God, because you've received a double blessing from God's hand. All right, let's pick it up with verse 6, 2 Timothy 1, 6. 
For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. You know, throughout the Bible, fire is the most common symbol of God's presence. In the book of Genesis, God spoke to Moses from the midst of a burning bush. When the children of Israel escaped the bondage of slavery in Egypt, God led them by a pillar of fire. When God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, Mount Sinai was described as a mountain of fire. At the end of Elijah's life, he was taken up to heaven on, on a chariot of fire. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, Paul is explaining the events of the second coming by saying, This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with His powerful angels. Now here's the amazing part of all of this. The Bible says that if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, the holy fire of God's presence dwells in you. Now this incredible truth is the result of two things. One, a promise that Jesus made to His disciples. And two, the events that took place on the day of Pentecost. Now, the promise that Jesus made to His disciples is found in John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Here Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. Jesus' promise was given to the disciples in the midst of of some terrible news that He had shared with them. He said, in the not-too-distant future, I'm going to be leaving you. But then He promised, after I leave, I'm going to send my personal representative to be with you. And here's the exciting part. While I could only be with you for a short time, the Holy Spirit will dwell with you forever. Okay, with that in mind, let's turn over to the second chapter of Acts. Now, here was the fulfillment of Jesus' promise. The disciples were having a prayer meeting when the Holy Spirit came down and turned the world upside down. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, the coming of the Holy Spirit in, in, uh, P- at Pentecost was a once-for-all-time event that has meaning and significance for every Christian. It has meaning and significance for your life. Beginning that day, the Holy Spirit took up residence in the life of every born-again child of God, which means the fire of God's presence is with you. You know, one of the fundamental challenges in in, in the Christian life is is to guard and protect that holy fire that's dwelling within you. That's what Paul was reminding Timothy when he said, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. Look, God cannot use you for His glory, and you'll never know know the fullness of of the abundant life that Christ has come to bring you unless you constantly fan into flame that holy fire that is within you. So how do you do it? How do you guard and protect the holy fire that is within you? How do you fan into flame the gift of God? Well, there are four things you need to do, really. Number one, carefully examine your life to see if there's any unconfessed sin in there. Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Two, open yourself up to the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Genuine spiritual growth is never the result of personal effort that you make. It's always the result of opening yourself up to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Three, find a prayer prayer partner who will offer you Christian support and encouragement. In Galatians 6, 2, the Bible says, Carry each other's burdens, and this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And four, stop being self-absorbed 
and find an outlet for, the Christ, for Christian ministry and service. See, when you're involved in efforts to share witness and share the love of Christ with others, the holy flame within you will be, will be ignited into a roaring fire, and that's guaranteed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of devotion today. I thank you for letting us think about how we can be more people of sincere faith and how we can, we can fan into flame the, you're the gift that you've given us. Father, help us to be faithful in what we say and do and help us to pray this prayer today. Holy Spirit, help me open myself up to you. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I think I'll, I'll continue to share some thoughts on the first chapter of 2 Timothy during Thursday's video devotion. There's still a lot of powerful stuff that I want to share with you. So I hope that you'll plan to visit, uh, join me again on, on Thursday morning. In the meanwhile, I hope that God blesses you with a bright and happy day. Please stay safe, wear that face mask, wash your hands, and maintain that social distance. Better days are coming, but we have to remain vigilant during these days. Well, I love you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.